Good day teachers, welcome to the second video in this series of Why Teach Memorization of Number Facts. If you haven't seen the first video yet, I encourage you to have a look, there'll be a link up here. In this second video, I'm going to deal with the fact that students who have memorized their number facts are less likely to become distracted, that they will be more efficient in doing maths in the classroom than they would be if they didn't know their number facts. So let's deal with a couple of points regarding cognitive processes, cognitive science if you like. The first thing is we know that the brain has a limited capacity to process information. In the context of children in the classroom, their brains can hold a certain amount of information and then they reach a limit. Suppose someone asks you for your phone number and you tell them quickly the sequence of digits. In Australia, that's 10 digits. So supposing you said, my phone number is 0438 791 346. Chances are they would say, uh, hang on a minute. It was 0438. And then you'd have to say whatever the next three digits are. I've forgotten because I just made that number up, 792. Two, three, four, and we usually break it up into chunks because anybody's brain has a limit to how much they can hold. If someone's practiced that and they can remember 10 digit phone numbers easily after hearing them once, good on them, but I expect they couldn't remember a 15 digit number or a 20 digit number. Whatever it is, there's going to be a limit. So our students in our classrooms are limited in their capacity to keep things in short term memory while they're doing maths. The second important point is that thought processes can be stopped or interrupted for a multitude of reasons. In a classroom setting, children can be prevented from making further progress on a problem if they are stopped because of boredom or stress, fatigue, anxiety, lack of interest, overwhelm, distraction, loud noises, hunger, the teacher asking a question. The list goes on and on and on. There are any number of reasons why children will stop what they're doing in terms of following a train of thought and following a sequence of steps, such as you might have in solving a maths problem, because of something in their environment, something which stops them from thinking about that. And when your mind is distracted, when you come back to the task, you have to pick up the pieces and retrace your steps and find where you were up to. So every teacher knows this and every teacher has strategies that they use to keep the distractions to a minimum. So teachers will establish a quiet working environment where students don't have lots of interruptions. They don't have a lot of children talking to each other and distracting each other and asking questions and so on. And as far as possible, Every teacher will try to keep students focused on what they're doing. This is so important for maths in particular. There are certain other subjects that you could have a sort of mild distraction every so often and it wouldn't interrupt you too much. But in mathematics, in solving problems especially, there will be multiple steps to follow. And if you get distracted at step number three and you go and do something else, or your mind is focused on something else, when you return to the problem, you chances are, oftentimes you'll have to go back to step one and step two, and you go, oh, that's right, I was doing step three. And then you can pick up where you left off. Now, what has this got to do with memorization of number facts? Here it is. If a student doesn't know a basic number fact in the middle of solving a problem, they will have to find the answer to that number fact somehow in order to continue making progress. I hadn't really thought about this. It's, it's amazing how if you don't know, here's an example, supposing you need to know seven plus five. In the middle of a problem, you have to know seven plus five. Now, if you can recall it, it's 12 and you move straight on. If you can't recall it, you must find out or you have to stop answering that question. You cannot make any further progress. You can't skip step three and move on to step four, generally speaking, because step four requires knowing the answer to step three. They interact with each other. So if you don't know seven plus five, you're going to have to look it up or check with someone else or use a calculator and all those other things we've talked about. If you have to stop what you're doing, stop what you're thinking in order to find out what is a fairly low level piece of information, five plus seven is 12 is a basic number fact. It's not complicated 
Memorizing it isn't complicated either. Once you've memorized it, you've memorized it. But if you don't know and you're looking it up, then you return to your work. Chances are you'll get, you'll have been distracted. Your train of thought will have been interrupted and you'll have to go, hang on, where was I up to? And go back to the previous step or go back to the beginning of the question and move through it. And then go, oh, right, that's what I was doing. Five plus seven is. If you're distracted from remembering five plus seven for too long, you'll have to repeat that process. So if you're interrupted in the middle of solving a problem, you go away to find out seven plus five, and then you come back to the problem. You go, okay, find your place in the problem. If you've forgotten seven plus five, you have to go back to the seven plus five. I know I've seen students do it. They'll use a calculator or some what I would call cheating method to find an answer to a question which they're supposed to have memorized and they're in the middle of a problem, they are trying to hold two things in their mind, the step in the problem and the, the focus on finding the solution to the question over here and remembering the number fact from over there. At least five plus seven is a fairly easy one and the answer is 12 and you know it probably doesn't take too long to remember that but some students will struggle to retain the 12 while they're solving a problem and probably while they're being distracted by a fellow student. So this is a really important factor in a classroom setting where students are solving problems, doing mathematical exercises, and they don't know number facts. It slows them, it's more than slowing them down. It distracts them, it interrupts their work, it stultifies, if I can use that word, it stultifies their progress on learning maths and doing maths and solving problems and completing exercises and understanding processes and strategies and so on. It's terribly important. So the recommendation, as always, is have your students memorize their number facts. Use a strategic process to teach them to memorize all the number facts that they're required to in the curriculum and it will speed their progress through maths because they won't be stopped in the middle of questions while they go and search for the answer to a basic fact that they really ought to have memorized. Before you go, I'd like to talk to you briefly about a brand new resource that we have for teaching number facts to students in year three and year four. It's called Blitzit Maths Radar Books three and four. This is a program to teach memorization and recall of number facts for students operating at a year three or year four level. It's an integrated digital plus print program that incorporates weekly videos for teachers and students, weekly animated PowerPoint lessons to teach thinking strategies, and daily practice worksheets, pre-tests and post-tests. It's a full program and it's designed to take away the hard work for teachers of designing and creating the resources that are needed for such a program. We have teachers in Queensland who are currently trialling this program and from them we're hearing remarkable reports of how well students are enjoying the program and growing in confidence, not just in maths but in their education generally. So if you'd like to receive a complimentary copy for you to evaluate for yourself and see whether it's right for your classroom or school, follow the link below this video and we'll mail it to you at no cost at all to you and your school. I'll also give you access to the website so you can check out the videos and the PowerPoint lessons. That's it for this video. It's not the end of our discussion of why we should teach children to memorize number facts, but for now I'll stop and I'll talk to you again in a future video.